name is Debbie. I've got to watch my voice this time. My name is Debbie. I run One Million Diamonds Instagram, and today we're talking with Katrina Chamberlain, who I actually met through Nicholas Cueva. He introduced me to her, and at the time she was doing a collaboration with Minor History, and so I actually have a bag from her collection that he sent to me, which I thought was amazing, and then I ended up going to a show at Tiger Strikes Asteroid in New York about six months ago, and I got to meet her, and I got to see her work, and I thought it was really amazing. So here we are today, and we're going to uh, do a little Zoom discussion. Hi, Katrina. Hi, Debbie. How are you? <laughs> I'm so happy to see that bag. I'm so happy that you have it. Um, I didn't know Nick was the one who organized all of that, so it was like Nick was like really behind a lot of like the uh, promotion of stuff. That's what he does, I guess. Um, I'm not good at sales <laughs> or anything, um, but I'm so happy that you have that. Um, that was a fun project that I did with Minor History. Yeah, I really like it. It's super cute, and I I think it's nice that I get to have a piece of your work in a in a different type of way too. So. As we start, I would like uh, to ask you a little bit about your background so that everyone kind of gets refreshed about who you are and, and knows a little bit about you before we begin. As a kid, I always wanted to make art. I always just, I just wanted to be a visual artist. I drew, you know, from a very little age. Um, and then um, I uh, went to UC Santa Barbara for undergrad um, and uh, was making, I was in the painting department made a lot of paintings. I was at UCSB for five years. I did, I did a fifth year and was just, was too poor. And I was like, I'm just going to stay in school for a little while longer because nice. I love my education. Um, and I ended up doing a lot of performance work and it was more because I think the paintings were kind of evolving into bodies and bodies that were performing. And, but then the performances were so much about the objects that I was making and these kind of, um, equipment or furniture on which um, I would perform or have the audience perform on. Um, so at that time I learned how to weld, to work with wood, I did some glass blowing, um, and I was kind of all over the place with media and I, I still am. I think that um, I uh, am really interested in the interaction with an experience, a, a, a feeling that you get when you're with uh, an object or an image. And it's so much about the body and how the body responds to what we look at and how it's shifted. I mean, we can think about this in like abstraction and like um, optical illusions. Optical illusions change the way we feel about something. I think about your work. There's a lot of like optical stuff, you know? Um, and I think that what I want to do is go beyond the, the, the how the eye shifts, how the body feels, but also how it um, has an emotional response and sometimes even has like a moral response. And so um, I went from drawing, painting to sculpture um, and installation and performance because I wanted the body to be activated and the body to be activated by objects. Um, and that was undergrad. Um, after undergrad, I took some time off. I moved to Japan um, and applied to grad school and then ended up at School of the Art Institute. Um, and at School of the Art Institute of Chicago, I, um, SAIC, um, I was in the performance department and it's crazy because it's like people are like wait you do performance and people are mostly drawn to my work because of my drawings um, or at least they kind of discover my work because of my drawings mm -hmm. so I've had kind of this like uh, constant evolution uh, um, of my work but I was I studied in, in grad school I studied performance art of all things to study in grad school when you're racking up debt it's <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, Let me ask but, you, do you still do yeah. uh, performance art? I mean, I did. we did a piece at uh, Brick this last summer working with cheerleaders, and I had cheerleaders perform on the objects. I feel so like I everything, everything is body-based in the end, even if the body is not appearing in the objects or even in the drawings. There's always a body like present in my mind. Um, and I mean, we can talk a lot about that more in the drawings, although I think it's less, like, less, less apparent because the drawing, the material itself isn't necessarily, um, body based, like graphite isn't, um, but, uh, the objects definitely have some, uh, a strong relationship to touch, um, feel, holding, grabbing, you know, um, so the body is always there. It's just the body's not visible. And it's about what the what the actual reaction of the audience member has to the object rather than 
um, like what we see, you know, you know, as an image. Um, so performance stays with me. I don't really like performing in front of people anymore. I used to, and it like, I'm just such an anxious person. I don't know. I have my own problems. <laughs> I hate being on screen anyways. Um, you know, I hate my voice. <laughs> I'm never going to listen to this. Um, um, I mean, I really, I'll probably like listen to like a minute and then I'll be like, no, nope, forget it. <laughs> I don't need to hear this. You look and sound how do you How do you do it? I mean, have you, when you edit, I, I cannot edit myself. I tried to do a Kickstarter once and it just, I just like, was just like, I can't listen to myself. It's so painful. It's taken a long time, but I, I'm really used to myself at this point. So I've... <laughs> I don't know. I talked to a lot of people. Um, I've had to talk to a lot of people all over the world with uh, some of the stuff that I do on the side. So um, you get pretty used to. And well, I, I, can, I mean, I see myself now, but I can't. I think maybe it's the hearing and then the watching my mouth move when it's not, you know, in real time. Then I'm like, what am I doing? I don't understand. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah. But anyway, so I really don't like performing. Um, but I, I'm not ever gonna like cancel that out. I used to do it a lot and I don't do it anymore. Um, and I now, so recently it's been more like, I wanna work with other people who might perform, maybe people who have skills that I don't have and work with them. Okay. Um, so with the cheerleaders, for example, they have skills that I do not have. Um, and I really wanted to kind of make this piece happen with them. Um, uh, Anyways, so grad school, School of the Art Institute of Chicago, grad school was very, um, uh, I, grad school was a great experience, I think. <laughs> I met a lot of great people. Um, it was, uh, SAC is very uh, social practice concentrated. Okay. Um, so it's very strong on activism and uh, artwork that changes the world, like the, it, intend, it intends to change the world politically. Okay. okay. And um, it's, it's interesting because I grew up, so here's the part of my story that's become, that com becomes really complex. I was born in Amsterdam in the Netherlands, um, a daughter of missionaries. Uh -huh. um, and uh, I was there until I was seven, and then we moved to Turkey. Because my mother is Armenian, an Armenian diaspora, and wanted to move back to Turkey in order to do some kind of reconciliation. Um, so she had this very strong um, like uh, conviction that she had to live in Turkey in order to find her roots and also reconcile with the people that murdered most of our family. Um, so it's very intense. And my parents are missionaries, like evangelical missionaries. So changing people was one of their, you know, like they wanted to affect the world and change the world for good or whatever they felt, you know, they believed. Um, my dad still lives in Turkey. Um, my mom passed away, but um, uh, it, it was living in an environment in which, you know, there was this constant drive to change or to give your ideas to someone else or to promote your ideas to, ideas to someone else um, was something that I, I grew up with. And then I went to grad school and I felt like I was surrounded with that again, but in a different point of view. So people were trying to convert you know, it was the, the other direction. And, um, and I, and I got caught up in it too. I mean, I was like, I was much more, um, I would say whatever progressive than my parents. Um, uh, I'm not religious in any way. Um, but this, but, but I was like, this is not, this is not, uh, I, what I found is that I think what I'm more interested in, and this is like, this is just me evolving over time. And I think that's, so great that I, I'm finally feeling this pace and it, feel, it feels so much more comfortable is I'm not trying to convert anyone anymore with my art. Um, I'm just trying to um, have someone ha have a feeling or an experience when they look at something. And that if that you know, affects them in some way, that's great. If it doesn't, that's fine. Um, and, and that feeling might be contempt. It might be anger. It might be um, being turned on. It might be uh, confusion. It might be frustration. It might be just beauty, but just a feeling. I just want a feeling when someone looks at, looks at work um, rather than a conversion of like what is good and true and right, you know? Um, and I think that actually when we start to feel things as humans, we become closer to understanding what is good and true is right and right 
for us. Um, and if we don't feel, you know, and if we don't recognize those feelings, um, then we're, we're having a difficult time relating to the world, you know? Um, so, uh, that's kind of my education. And I mean, like my education go went from like, you know, growing up in this environment in which I was part of a missionary, a missionary world in, uh, the Netherlands and then in Turkey in a um, predominantly Muslim environment as a minority uh, uh, Armenian and then going to undergrad, moving to the States for the first time and then grad school where there was like this whole other kind of missionary, I think like work happening. Um, and now I'm out of school. It's been 10 years since I've been out of school and I've been in real life and not had um, uh, academia um, have like such an impact or a real kind of a, some perspective on academia or at least like my education. Um, so that's kind of the story of my education. Okay. <laughs> any sense. <laughs> no, it made complete sense actually. Um, yeah. My question to you, since you did really answer most of the questions that I had, um, I you think can, my, like elaborate on some of those if you want to ask. I kind of, I know I kind of jumped around some of the things. But. No, you really did a great job, actually. Um, so I, I guess I just have a little bit more to ask you. Uh, I do find your work super amazing, and I think that I always wondered about the structures and the lines and everything. Um, just there's a lot of rope. Do you have anything you'd like to show, actually? Uh, I don't have, you know, I could grab a rope somewhere, um, but okay. So right now, you may uh, right now something that I'm working on right now. Okay. Um, is I, so you know it's uh, COVID and we've been stuck inside for so long, yes. and um, I have a, a closet attached to a studio uh, workspace here in uh, Guanas area, okay, um, in Brooklyn. And I mean, it's where I do most of my work. I can weld. I can you know work with wood and all this stuff. It's all over there, and um, I have a, a, a closet there. And it was, the whole building was shut down though. So we weren't allowed to access it. Oh, the man. first we were allowed to go in. So I just grabbed as much as I could and then okay. brought it here. Um, it's just opening up now, but like in a very, very restricted way. Like we can, we all, there's like 50 members and one person can go in at a time. So you have to kind of book the place <laughs> in advance. Wow. Um, but uh, the kind of stuff that I, that I do, you know, like I weld and I work with wood um, and then I work with silicones and molds. Those kinds of things don't really happen so much, can't really happen so much at home. Um, uh, I, I, I continue to draw, thankfully. That's one thing that, that's like so um, grounding for me is drawing, is I can do it in, in any environment. I mean, it, it started when I, when I got uh, pregnant and was just feeling sick. It was the only thing I could ever do. And I continued and that's like kind of been just the stable thing in my life. Okay. Um, so, and then, but then, so being at home, I still wanted to make objects. So I started making, <laughs> this is really silly, but it's about feeling and a body. Um, I found some, some, uh, candles that were lying around in the house nice. and I poured it into one of my old, uh, um, uh, uh, one of the molds. And so I made some, um, molds of these candles and this is wax so this is the beeswax and i have um i think about 40 something of these right now that is super uh, cool. and um i mean you know it's definitely a <laughs> an erotic kind of object um but it has, and it's like this double-ended kind of like dildo thing, like a, uh, I don't know, like there's like this Linda, I don't know if you know, like the Linda Bangless piece, there's like a Linda Bangless, like there's two penises and it's steel, cast steel. Okay. Um, okay. So, ta -da! Um, but I've made a bunch of these and I, and it, and I just keep making them every day and there's absolutely no, like, I don't really know why I'm doing it. I I'm hope you have a show with these. These are great. <laughs> I have a ton of them and I'm going to keep making them. I want to have like, I want to cover a massive room and then I don't know how they're lit really. I mean, I guess they just like, you just light them and then they kind of, you know, I mean, it's going to get cut from here to here. Anyways, this is a work in progress. I really don't know what, where it's going, which is kind of like scary and weird and <laughs> no I absolutely love it. it's super raw and organic and it's got so many possibilities yeah um yeah and it definitely I mean like uh I think my work um definitely falls into 
I'm definitely um, using a lot of just designed object type of forms. Mm -hmm. um, and this is like, you know, a very classic designed object. The, you know, uh, the, the dildo. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> an, Cats early, an early form of um, <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> I think it's amazing because it, it kind of takes on so many different shapes and ideas, really. And you could kind of use it for many different things. And right. <laughs> it's very <laughs> functional, multifunctional. Um, Our piece. Uh, yeah. Um, the, uh, yeah. Oh, a part of this process too is that it's 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 wax, right? So it's warm when it comes out of the mold, and so every time I take it out, I have to bend it and really like manipulate it. Oh, okay. So me just like squeezing this thing to get it to its next form. And so every the mold wasn't like different. this; the mold was straight. Right. Yeah. So each one oh, is wow. different. So I'm kind oh. of like playing with each one. Um, so there's this kind of like frustration going with like pulling something, you know, dealing with like this daily activity, um, this ritual with yourself in a way, you know, um, happening with this friggin' dildo. <laughs> it's just, I, I absolutely love them. I want one. Um, <laughs> we only have a few minutes left. I wanted to ask you, besides obviously your, your, uh, wax dildos um i was wondering what else you were thinking for the future for yourself Ugh. well i had several projects that were going right at the beginning of um the uh pandemic and mm -hmm. i was making a couple of uh larger pieces like the one that you saw at tsa that was um, amazing by the way i have to say thanks. like i am just between the rope and the the structure i was just like Oh my god! So gorgeous. Um, so at, at TSA, it was this kind of steel um, gym equipment structure in which there was silicone rope and a small um, whistle with a little cross on it, um, and kind of um, uh, extra attachments in order to hold on to. So this kind of abstract equipment that suggested um, exercise but also the erotic and also morality, which is kind of this whole thing that I'm going at. It's like, when, when you look at an object, what's activated in your body? And is that, is that beyond just, you know, being turned on? Is it also just like a moral response that you have, you know, when you look at something? And I want, I want forms and objects to be able to do that to you and to kind of mess with what you're, what you're thinking. Like, Am I supposed to be feeling, you know, attracted to this, or am I supposed to be repulsed by it? Sometimes it depends on like what you're what you're looking at. Um, uh, so I have several other structures like these kind of this larger gym equipment um, mm -hmm. that I'm making with more kind of ropes, but different kinds of ropes um, and different and other little elements with signifiers on them. Um, and I have two of those in the works. And then this summer I was supposed to do a residency in Puerto Rico, and I don't know if that's happening. I mean, it was going to happen but um maybe it'll happen at a future date but it was going to be an outdoor um two of those kind of large structures outdoors, okay. in an outdoor um they basically public sculpture that would be out on view for two years okay. um in an environment that was nature natural environment mm -hmm. um, you know in on grass and near trees and feeling like a jungle gym, which a lot of my artwork also feels like playgrounds and jungle gyms, which I think that's kind of something that I was thinking about lately is this playground and that developmental time when we're really discovering ourselves, our, our physical bodies and also our emotional, you know, well-being. Like it's all kind of coming together in that, in that space, what we can do and what, what we feel comfortable and what we don't feel comfortable with. Okay. Um, and uh, so that, that kind of continues like that, that that's, I'm hoping that that will happen, but we'll see. All right. Well, thank you for talking to me today. I'm, I'm a little bit worried we might get cut off, but, um, I do appreciate you talking to me and this is all very interesting. I wanted to know what was behind your work and now I kind of feel like I have a, a lot better idea of what it is. Cool. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So much, thank Kat. you for having me. This, this has been wonderful and I'm, definitely interested to hear more about your work. And I, I think I'm probably going to put a little bit in the actual uh, video so that people could see it too. Yeah. I didn't put anything up there, but that's I mean, all right. I'll, I'll splice it in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all, right. all right. Thank you. No problem. All right.